In this tutorial, we will discuss how to create a live timer or a clock, with hour minute and second values, that keeps changing, and remains in sync with the video. So let's start with Blender, we'll use the default cube, and convert it into the time text, using our all-time favorite geometry nodes. So we'll split our screen and open the geometry nodes editor, and create a new node tree. We get the default input output nodes, but we don't need this group input. We'll create the time text ourselves using a string input, so let's add a value to string node, that will hold the hour value, and we'll connect it to a string to curves node. It converts the string into a set of curves, and we need to fill the curves with a face data, so we'll connect it to a fill curve node. Finally, we need to connect it to a realize instances node, so that the curve data is converted into a real geometry. So this is more or less the basic node tree to create some text using geometry nodes, and here is our result. We need to also make it upright, so let's change the X rotation value to 90 degrees. Now let's go to the front view mode, by pressing 1 on the number pad. We can also customize the text data, like center aligned, and the vertical orientation can be middle. We can change the font size, or the font type from here as well. Maybe we can pick up a nice font, like Arial Bold, from the list of fonts available on our system. So this looks good. Now we can proceed to the actual building blocks, in order to create a live time text. We need to add here the hour minute and second components. So, instead of this single value input, which is just for hour, we'll duplicate it once for the minute value, and once again for the seconds, so we'll have three input values. One is for the hour, then this is for the minute, and this third one is for the second. Then, instead of this, we'll connect these strings to a node called, join strings node, in order to combine everything into one single string. We need to connect the input string here, and all other input strings also need to be connected to this bucket. Then for the delimiter, let's enter a colon sign here, and finally we'll connect it to the rest of the nodes, so we get an output like this, with all the time values joined together, but we need to improve it further. For example, we need to add a leading zero before these numbers, if they happen to be single digits. So we need to make some changes to this node tree, and here we have the updated nodes. We are first checking the length of the input value, using a node called string length. If it is less than two digits, we are joining the input string with a leading zero or a zero string, and we're doing it for all the three inputs, and we get this kind of leading zeros before the numbers. Now in the next step, we want to derive these hour minute or seconds, based on the scene time, or the frame number. So let's go to the add menu, and from the input group, under scene, we'll add a scene time node into our node tree. Then the output of this node, will control the input time values. Let's first derive the hour value, by passing it through a division node, and we need to divide it by 3600. It will become our hour value, but please remember that this time value also depends on the frame rate and the output properties. So let's say if we use 30 FPS, it simply means that for each 30 frames, the scene time will increase by just one second. Later you can even change the frame rate, your clock will always remain in sync with your video's run length. We will duplicate it for the minute component, and this time it will be floored modulo. Then we'll follow the same method again, but the divisor will be 60 for the minutes, and another modulo division, or floored modulo by 60, will give us the second component of the time value. If we now go to say frame number 2000, the clock will show 1 minute and 7 seconds, which is an approximate time. Likewise, if we go to a larger frame number, we can see 3 hours, 5 minutes and 11 seconds. But for our clock, we need to ensure a perfect value, without any rounding off, and we would also like to add an AMPM identifier. So we need to further improve this node tree, and here is our complete node setup, you can download it from the links given below. You'll see that we have some input fields, like this 12 hour checkbox, and if we disable this, we'll get a 24 hour format, without the AMPM identifier. Then we have some time values, that will set the initial time on the clock. Right now we are at this frame number, so if we go back to frame number 1, everything will get zeroed out here. Now, let's say we set the initial hour to 11, and we can set the initial minute value to 59, and finally, let's make the second maybe 57. So the time starts from here on our clock, and now if we run the animation, we'll see that the clock time is increasing perfectly, at every second, just as expected, and we get a live display of time. We can also test the AMPM part, let's say we change this hour value to maybe 20. So we'll get this time on our clock for the current frame. But if we disable this, we'll get the 24-hour format, 
without the AMPM identifier. You can use whichever format is more suitable for your use case. So this is how we can create a live timer using geometry nodes and you can download this node tree from the links given below in the video description. So I hope you like this tutorial, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.